In this video, we're going to talk more about the actual data we can use to measure industry concentration. And one of the um, most important tools that we have at our disposal is the North American Industry Classification System, or NAICS. Um, and so the Census Bureau uh, will often give CR4 and HHI based on, on the NAICS data. And so, for example, the manufacturing and services area of the economy are split into 20 sectors. Um, and so the big sectors are identified by two digit codes. Then they are subdivided further into 100 subsectors, which have three digit codes, uh, 317 industry groups, which have four digit codes, and then 1,179 uh, industries, which have six digit codes. So uh, let's look at some examples. So if we think about the manufacturing uh, sector, that's 31. Then um, divide that in, you know, looking more granularly, the beverage and tobacco manufacturing subsector, that's 312. Then the industry group of beverage manufacturing, so now we're just looking at beverages, tobacco's in a different um, industry group, that's 3121. Uh, and then we have some examples of, you know, five different industries. So soft drink manufacturing is 312111. Bottled water manufacturing is 312112, beer manufacturing, wine manufacturing, etc. Um, and so you can get these. These are uh, easily available. Um, and the Bureau of Economic Analysis um, will provide economic data definitely down to the industry groups, sometimes down to the industry um, for things like employees and output. Um, and so you can do some really good uh, data analysis uh, with that data. So if we look at concentration in, in various industries, um, so we can see, you know, this is going from less concentrated to more concentrated. Uh, so textile mills have the lowest uh, CR4, um, and this is going back to 2002. Um, so they have the top four firms in textile manufacturing have a 13.8 CR4 and a 94 um, HHI, so 94 out of 10,000, right? Remember, so that's very um, not concentrated. Uh, and then, you know, we have things like ice cream and frozen desserts. The top four firms have 32.3% market share. The HHI is 445, so still pretty low. Soft drinks, right? So soft drinks, we think, all right, well, that's a pretty uh, concentrated firm. CR4 is 47.2, so that is above our 40% uh, that we talked about earlier. But the HHI is still only about 800, so that's less than the 1,000 um, that the DOJ looks at. Um, and so, you know, even though we have a lot of, you know, even though Coke and Pepsi, you know, dominate a lot of the soft drink um, world, there are lots of generic brands uh, that sort of make it a little bit more competitive. Uh, and then we, you know, go to things like automobiles, 79.5 for the top four firms. That's pretty concentrated. The HHI now is, is well above 1,000. It's at 2,350. Um, Electric light bulbs, 88.9 for the CR4. So they have, you know, the top four firms have almost the entire market. Um, and the HHI is 2,849. Um, I'm not sure why the HHI is not here for some of these. But if you look at cigarettes, for example, the top four firms basically control the entire market at 98.9. So we're going to look a little bit at beer as an example. Um, if we look at the concentration curve, so this dotted line is the concentration curve in 1970, uh, and then the solid line is the concentration curve in 2008. You can see it has shifted up dramatically um, as the CR4 has increased dramatically as well since 1947, right? So the CR4 is, you know, well above 90% um, in 2008, um, and the HHI has. Um, oh, excuse me, the HHI, yeah, that's the, the dotted line here, uh, has gone from, you know, 0 to uh, over 40. And that's on a 0 to 100 scale. So that would be, you know, a, a 0.4 or a, a 4,000. Um, so it's definitely increased in size, right? Um, now, one thing that we need to think about a little bit is that in 1970, the beer market was much more regional. So we could have still had a fair amount of concentration in the beer market, but it would have been, you know, the beer market for, you know, the upper Midwest, the lower Midwest, the New England area, the West Coast. Um, and so it, 
really became a national industry more after 1970. Um, but as we can see, uh, it has certainly increased in concentration and it would be highly concentrated from sort of 1982 uh, on. So one question is, all right, well, what causes some of these uh, industries to become so concentrated? Uh, one early sort of theory was that it was just randomness, right? So uh, Gibraltar in 1931 said, well, what if firms are, some firms are just luckier than other firms? And he showed that that could actually increase concentration as the luckier firms grew and the unluckier firms shrank. Um, Shearer and Ross ran a simulation of an industry and they showed that, yeah, it could, um, it could really change that. Their, their simulation showed that CR4 uh, rose starting out at 8%, so the top four firms had 8% market share and going up to 54% uh, percent market share by period 140, and that was just based on luck. Now, we don't actually think luck is necessarily um, the driving force, right? It probably has some, there is probably some um, impact of luck. But I think greater globalization over the last 40 years has definitely increased, and especially over the last 20 years. Um, and technological change, right? So if you think about Walmart's expansion, that was really driven by technological change because their main competitive advantage was uh, using computer technology to control their supply chain in a way uh, that other firms couldn't, and therefore offering lower prices. So. If we look at industry concentration sort of across countries in different areas, we can see that there are a lot of similarities, although there are some areas where that is not true. Um, and that implies that technology does have um, an impact. And so firms that have you know high fixed costs and then falling um, average costs are going to be more concentrated, whereas for industries with lower uh, fixed costs, easier entry are going to be less concentrated. So if you see you know, baby foods tend to be highly concentrated in all of these countries. Um, salt tends to be uh, concentrated in all of these, whereas bread tends to be much less concentrated. Um, but then there are some, you know, like Italy has much less concentration in things like flour and bread um, and even processed meats than some of these other industries, whereas they are more concentrated um, say than Germany in, in beer, right? So you know that's maybe not a huge surprise given that uh, Germany has a much has a, a big beer industry.